God is good all the time. Put a song good morning, church, and all our viewers. Hope you are all staying safe and staying blessed in the presence of the Lord. We are thankful to the Lord for a blessed year, and we are all looking forward to a great year. We are also thankful to the Lord for a wonderful and an anointed media service last week, especially the message by Reverend Josephine de Villa, entitled Cooperation. Let us remember Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, Two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. I am Sister Marvik, your presider for this week. Our theme for the Lord for 2023 is Enlarge, Lengthen, Strengthen, and Multiply, found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 2 to 3. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and will make the desolate cities inhabited. And let us look forward to a year of mighty breakthrough for his glory. Mighty breakthrough brings forth great blessings. Praise the Lord. May the good Lord continue to use us as a blessing to many and even unto the nations of the world. Amen. Let us continue to be united in prayer for the gospel to reach all nations. Praise the Lord. Many thanks once again for all your earnest prayers and faithful support for our Digital Discipleship Church Program. By the way, our presenters for this week are the following. A scripture reading is by Brother to Rachel Van Raja. Worship leading is by Sister Grace and Musicians. Exhortation is by Brother Kelvin Daniel. Praise the Lord. Prayer of the Nations of Philippines will be led by Sister Lourdes Idulan from FGCCI Main Church. The Word of God will be shared by Rev. Christy Lumanglas Roca from FGCCI Main Church. Closing and benediction will be conducted by Rev. Dr. David Gray, Senior Pastor and Spiritual Overseer of FGCCI. Praise the Lord. Stay tuned, church, and once again, let's look forward for a great year. God bless us all and stay safe. Amen. Good morning, church, and all our viewers. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless, and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart, and has no slander on his tongue. Who does his neighbor no wrong, and casts no slur on his fellow men? Who despises a vile man, but honors those who fear the Lord? Who kept his oath, even when it, it hurts? Who lends his money without usury, and does not accept a bribe against the innocent? He who does these things will never be shaken. May the Lord bless the scripture reading for today. Stay safe and God bless. Amen. God is good. God is good.
Good morning, church and viewers. Let us worship the Lord, our Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords.
Good morning, church, and to all of you. I am Brother Kelvin, your exalter for this week, with the message of giving is worship. I am quite sure many of us know the meaning of giving, but however, what is worship giving? We can learn from those that made a difference in the lives of others through their giving. First, let us give worshipfully. It is important to see that the giving of tithes and offerings as a primary act of worship before our Lord God. We worship Him through song, through prayer and through the study of and obedience of the scriptures. We worship when we participate in the ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Nevertheless, we should also give as an act of worship before our God. As in 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 8, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In addition, God is able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Here are some illustrations of types of givers stated in the Bible. Number one, unlimited giver. A poor widow who gave two small coins as an offering in the temple. This event is found in Mark 12 verses 41 till 44 and Luke verses 21 verses 1 to 4. According to the event, Jesus was in the temple observing people as they gave their offerings. Many rich people gave large amounts of money but then came a poor widow who gave only two coins which was all that she had. Jesus pointed out to the disciples that the poor widow had given more than all of the others because she had given all that she had, while the others gave only a portion of their wealth. Jesus saw her heart and knew that her offering was sacrificial and deeply meaningful despite its small size. This highlights the importance of giving out of a heart of love and sacrifice rather than just giving to impress others or fulfill religious obligation. It also reminds us that God values our offerings no matter how small they may seem when they come from a heart that is fully devoted to Him. Number two, merciful giver. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with your entire mind and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. However, he desiring to justify himself, ask Jesus, Who is my neighbor? This is taken from Luke 10 verses 25 to 29. Jesus replies with a story. Jesus answered, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho as he fell among robbers who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side, in the same way a levit also. When he came to the place, saw him pass by on the other side. However, a certain Samaritan, as he travelled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion, came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the host and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will repay you when I return. 
Now, which of these three do you think seemed to be a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? He said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. It's in Luke 10 verses 30 to 37. Number three, reluctant giver. In the Bible, there are several instances of reluctant givers. People who are hesitant or resistant to give of their resources, whether it may be time, money or possessions. Here are a few examples. As in Cain in Genesis 4, Cain was reluctant to give his best to God as an offering. He gave some of his produce but not his best and his heart was not at the right place. As a result, his offering was not accepted by God. Ananias and Sapphira, as in Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira were reluctant givers who lied about how much money they had given to the church. They wanted to appear more generous than they were actually were, but their dishonesty led them to their downfall. Next, the rich young ruler, as in Mark 10. A rich young ruler came to Jesus and asked what he needed to do in order to inherit eternal life. Jesus told him to sell all his possessions and give his money to the poor. But the young man was unwilling to do so. He went away sad because his wealth had become more important to him than following Jesus. The people of Israel in Malachi, in Malachi 3, God rebukes the people of Israel for their reluctance to give their tithes and offerings. They were robbing God of what was rightfully His and God challenged them to test Him by giving generously and seeing if He would not bless them in return. This event serves as a warning to us to examine our own hearts and motivations when it comes to giving. We are called to be cheerful givers who give generously and sacrificially, not out of obligation or for our own glory but as an act of worship and obedience to God. Number four, abundant giver. In the Bible, people who have given generously and sacrificially out of their love for God and their fellow human beings, here are a few examples. The widow of Zephaniah. Zep as in 1 Kings 17, Elijah came to the widow of Zephaniah and asked for some water and bread. The widow told him that she only had enough flour and oil to make one last meal for herself and her son. But she gave it to Elijah anyway. As a result, God blessed her and her household with an abundance of flour and oil that never ran out. David is in 2 Samuel 24. David offered to buy a threshing floor from a man named Arona who built an altar to the Lord. Rona offered to give David the land and the oxen for the sacrifice, but David insisted on paying for it. He said, I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing, as in 2 Samuel, verses 24. Uh, and, and it goes on, the Macedonian churches, as in, in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul wrote about the churches in Macedonia who give generously even though they were experiencing poverty and hardship themselves. He said they gave beyond their means of their own accord, as in 2 Corinthians 8 verses 3, and begged Paul to allow them to contribute to the needs of the saints in Jerusalem. Jesus, of course, the ultimate example of abundant giving is himself. He gave up everything, even his own life, for the sake of humanity. He taught his disciples to give generously, saying, It is more blessed to give than to receive, as in Acts 20, verses 35. These instances remind us of the importance of giving generously and sacrificiously as an expression of our love for God and our neighbors. They also remind us that when we give abundantly, God blesses us and uses our gifts to bless others. Summary Giving is an act of worship as mentioned in several areas in the Bible. One such verse is found in 2 Corinthians 
9 verses 6 to 7 which says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In this passage, Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church to give generously to support the needs of others. He emphasizes that giving should be done freely and joyfully, not out of obligation or guilt. He also explains that giving is an act of sowing which will reap a harvest of blessings in return. The idea of giving is an act of worship and is also reflected in other verses in the Bible such as Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 which says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with two overflowing and your wets will brim over with new wine. Let's ponder and reflect the message of today, which is giving is worship. God bless all of you. All the time, through the darkest... Good morning, church, and all our viewers. Let's pray for the country, Philippines. Our Father, thou art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of your grace. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness, your greatness, your mercy, your love for the country Philippines. Father, we bring to you the country Philippines. This country belongs to you, Father, for you are the center of the Philippines, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your guidance. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. The country, Philippines, is getting back to me. We thank you, Lord, for all the frontliners the doctors, the nurses, the parademics, for their continuous dedication to serve the people. We pray for blessings upon them, O God. Give them a good health, Lord. We thank you, Father, for our President, Ferdinand Romaldas Marcos Jr., your chosen people to lead the country, Philippines. Father, we pray for your guidance, Father. Guide him, Lord, that he may rule the country, Philippines, peacefully. We thank you, Father, for giving him a good health, godly wisdom and knowledge, that he may lead the country, Philippines, according to your will. Bless him, Lord, and his family. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your wonderful Father. We pray that you will give him a good health. Bless all the cabinet members over the senators, the governors, congressmen, mayors, and town to all barangay officials, that they will do their job to serve the country not on their own understanding, but to serve the country with honesty. Bless their families, Father, and sustain all their needs. We pray, Father, for the transformation of the country, Philippines. We thank you, Father, for our president, for bringing investors in the country, and it's a big help to rise up the economy in the country, Father. We thank you, Lord, for more new jobs that are offered to those who are jobless, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the military, office, military Father, and the Department of Local Government 
who are doing their jobs with sincerity to track down the legal activities in the country. Father, heal the country Philippines. Selling drugs and corruptions are rampant. We pray peace, unity, love towards one another. We pray for breakthrough, restoration, and revival. Through you, Father, nothing is impossible. We thank you, Father, for taking care of our families. Father, cover the country Philippines with your precious blood. We thank you, Father, for your unconditional love to all your people. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, praises, honor, and thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord. Family, especially to all the brother and sister in Malaysia, and of course in all the nations that celebrating Sunday service for today. And now I just want to <clears throat> thank you, Pastor David, for giving me a chance to share the word of God again in media service. Thank you for all the leaders in FDCCI, especially in Malaysia. And thank you also uh, to all the leaders. Thank you, thank you. And I really miss you. I really miss FGCC. I, Malaysia. <clears throat> and now, I just want to share the word of God for today. The title, Presence of God. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 14 to 16 says, and he said, my presence will go, will go with you and I will give you rest. And verse 15 says, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring up us up from here. Verse 16 says, for how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us. So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are up upon the face of the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless the reading of His word. Truly that uh, when God promised to be with Him and to give him peace and rest throughout the journey, through his, through his Holy Spirit, God promised to be with us and always with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> if we just ask him, when we accept him as Lord of our lives, he forgive us and he purify us on inside. So that he can he can then reside in us. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we face our own challenging day, <clears throat> at least one truth remains as well. The Lord is with us always. The Lord is with us. Praise the Lord. Simply because of his great love and care for us. God promised. To remain in our midst. God promised that always remain in our midst. That's why we need always the presence of God. That's what God said in the beginning of Exodus chapter 33. But what Moses did is he stood in the gap before God and he said, God, I cannot go forward. These people cannot go forward without you. So we need you. 
That's Moises did in the stood in the gap before God and is and say if your presence doesn't go with us then we cannot go into this land so we need we need God we need you in this verses show us that we cannot do nothing apart from God the key of living this life is the next is to daily experience the presence and the power of presence of our Almighty God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In our Christian life, how can we experience God's presence? How can we experience God's presence in our life? In 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Praise the Lord. The powerful message from the Lord. And God reveals himself when we seek him and turn away from sin god knows that we will fall sometimes god knows that we will fall sometimes but always remember that god loved the humble heart always remember brother and sister that god loved the humble heart in matthew chapter 7 verse 7 to 11 you can read by your own Keep on asking and you will find me when you seek me. So how God, how can we find God if we cannot, if we not ask and find God? Amen. So God invite us, God invite us to approach him as like a child and approach us a loving father. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14 says, Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased position to the praise of His glory? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, in the Spirit is God guarantee that He will, God, he will give us everything that He promised. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second is, when are we afraid of promise of the Lord? When? When are we afraid of the promise of the Lord? In Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 says, Towards evening, they and they heard the sound of the Lord. God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. <clears throat> and Adam and his wife, had the devil from the presence of the Lord, God among the trees of the garden. So, in the presence of sin in our life, causes us to fear the presence of the Lord. So, to walk into God's presence with a heart, with a heart bent towards sin, to invite the Lord judgment. So, living in the Lord's presence gives us a better relationship with other Christians. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, living in the Lord's presence gives us a better relationship with our family, with our friends. So, better. So, living the Lord's presence will give us a better relationship with our co-worker, with our classmates. So, that's why we need to live in the presence of God. So, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 say, But if we walk in the light, as He is the light, we have a fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all, of, from all sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why... We need the presence of the Lord in our life. We need the presence of the Lord in our family. So we need the presence of the Lord 
in the church. We need the presence of the Lord every day in our life. That's why it's very clear. It's very clear in the first John chapter 1 verse 7. If we walk in the light as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all the sins. So we need, we need, we need the light. So because God is the light, He is the light. So we have fellowship with one another. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify His name. So in, in conclusion, in conclusion, we have to open in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 12. Chapter, 12, uh, chapter 26 verse 12. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Amen. Very powerful word from the Lord. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. So it's my, it's my, uh, in our life, it's very important that we have God's promise. I will walk among you. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. So it depends to us if you want to walk with God then and, sabi, and then the Lord say you shall be my people. Amen. God wants us to be with us. Amen. In this year 2023. So let us embrace always the presence of God. Another verse, Psalm 23 verse 6 say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. So whenever we go, God is there. Whenever we go, God is always following us. Whenever we go, when we go to somewhere, God is always there to, to be with us always. Because the presence is the presence of God is living in us. Because the presence of God is always with us. It rests upon us. That is very important in the Christian living. That the presence is of the presence of God is always with us. Praise the Lord. And I hope this short message, you learn something, you get something. And I hope this, this message will give you, will give you the, the guidance how the presence of God rests upon in our life. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's bow our head and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being with us. Thank you, Lord God, for leading us in this message, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, who hear this word, this message, Lord God, Lord, that this word, Lord God, will rest upon to your children, Father God. Thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. Guide us and lead us always. And we ask, Lord, to cover us with your precious blood always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning, church and all our viewers. Thank you once again for tuning in to FGCC I Media channel. I hope that you are richly blessed by this week's media service. I also hope that you are staying strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to take this time to thank all the presenters for their wonderful efforts, especially Sister Marabik for our wonderful presiding, and also Brother Turai for his excellent scripture reading on Psalm 15. And also Sister Grace and our musician, Sister Poe and Christo and Faustina, for leading us in a wonderful time of worship. I also want to thank Brother Kelvin Danner for his excellent exhortation and title, Giving is Worship. Truly is very insightful and truly is so well delivered. We are also inspired and encouraged. I also want to especially thank Sister Lodes for praying for the nation of Philippines. Let's continue to pray for mighty revival, and also mighty economic revival in the land of the Philippines. Hallelujah. 
on especially Tang Reverend Christy Lumangas Ruka from FGCCI Main Church, who is now in the Philippines, for her wonderful and uh, excellent and powerful message, short but powerful message on the presence of God. Hallelujah. And in summary, I just want to read to you from the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 8. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. As Reverend Christy Lumanga shared about how Moses appealed or pleaded with the Lord and do not take us from where we are unless your presence go with us. God initially wanted just want to send the angels, but his presence is not going with them. But Moses knows the importance and the power of God's presence. That's why he requested and appealed for the Lord to go with them. If not, they will not go, they will not go unless God's presence go with them. And here in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, it talks about we need to enter into God's rest. And in the time of Moses, God spoke to Moses, his presence will go with the Israelites and will give them rest. So one of the powerful result that comes from the presence of God is rest. Rest in our heart. Not that we don't have uh, challenges or problems, but we will have a restful heart. We will not be anxious, but we have that restful heart, know that God is with us, and God is able to overcome every trial and challenges that we face. That rest comes when we have the presence of God in our hearts. So when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and we have God's presence and we can develop the presence of God in our life. I just want to give you in conclusion, in summary, the three keys for you to develop God's presence in your life and so that you can enter into His rest. And number one is worship. When you develop a lifestyle of worship, that's where you begin to develop God's presence in your life. Worship brings forth the presence into our midst. Worship brings forth the presence into our life. That's how it's so important to develop a lifestyle of worship. Be a worshiper of God. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus told a Samaritan woman uh, at the well of Sychar uh, that we worship God not in this mountain or in that place, but we worship God in spirit and in truth, and in this manner, we can develop the presence of God in our life. Hallelujah. And number two, number two is prayer. Develop a lifestyle of prayer, and then, then you are able to, to develop the presence of God in your life. When we pray, the presence of God will come by His Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, and even to teach us and direct us to pray. So having a lifestyle of prayer is so important to develop the presence of God in our life. In fact, if we do not pray, we're not able to develop God's presence in our life. Prayer is so powerful. That's why Jesus mentioned that men ought to pray and not lose heart. When we pray, God's presence comes and we begin to learn to develop His presence in our life through regular and consistent prayer or having a prayer lifestyle or a lifestyle of prayer. That's number two. Number three is the Word of God. As the angels are told uh, to Mary, you shall call his name Jesus, or he is called Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. God with us. 
And even though the Lord have ascended to heaven, but he has, he has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. Even though the Lord has ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago and is coming back again soon, but his word remains with us. Oh, number three is the word of God. We must be diligent to read his word, to meditate upon his word, to confess his word. That's how we develop the presence of God in our life. The power of the word of God. As we meditate, reflect, or speak for his word, or pray his word, or worship according to his word, we begin to develop the presence, the power of God's presence in our life. Hallelujah. And when God's, God's presence comes upon our life, we are always we are able to enter into His rest. And we are always have rest and peace, even in the midst of our challenges or trials, or even problems, knowing that, as the word of the Lord says, thanks be unto God who grant us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we will always be victorious in facing our challenges because God is with us and His presence will always go ahead of us. Hallelujah. I hope this short summary and uh, closing were able to richly bless your heart. And as usual, we're going to give our thanks and our offerings to the Lord and let us pray. The Heavenly Father, even as we lift up Lord His thanks and His offerings and His love gift before Thy throne of grace, bless Lord His giving for the advancement of Your kingdom and for the glory of Your name. Return back, Lord, Your blessings upon every giver, hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. God. Let Your name be greatly magnified and glorified in the nations of the world. Let this gospel of the kingdom be preached in every nation till the day of thy coming and father we pray all this in jesus mighty name amen praise the lord thank you church and all our viewers for tuning in for tuning into fgcc i mean the channel let us uh, continue to stay strong in the lord and inspired in the lord and before we conclude this week's media service I'd like to give you a benediction. Just close your eyes and hearken to the benediction for this week. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. May the Lord stretch from His hands of favor and the blessings and the providence and the protections upon you and upon your family and upon your loved ones. May you go with the presence of God and may the presence of God go ahead of you and grant you rest. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, and all our viewers once again for tuning in to FDCC I Media mean, channel. Let us continue to stay strong and stay inspired in the Lord together. Jesus.